Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I'm not in the workshop today. I'm going to do something a little bit different, um, so I'm here at home. Uh, I wanted to start off by talking about uh, or correcting something from the previous video. Uh, the last video that we did on the uh, AB165 basement repair. Uh, there was something that I was struggling to understand with the phase inverter, why that extra capacitor was there in the uh, negative feedback loop. And I was looking at it all wrong, and I, I had a quick conversation with Mark G in the, uh, the comments, so thank you Mark G for, uh, for pointing out what I was missing. Um, and of course now looking back at it, it's obvious, but at the time I, I was thinking of uh, I was thinking in terms of a positive voltage coming into the grid of the phase inverter, but really the issue wasn't a positive voltage, it was ground. So the ground was our DC that had to be blocked with that capacitor. Now, if you look at the schematic here, you'll see we've got this one meg uh, resistor, the bias resistor, and then uh, in series with that is our 22k tail resistor to ground. That 47K resistor in the negative feedback loop ends up being in parallel with those two resistors because the secondary winding of the output transformer is also connected to ground. So you put that 47K resistor in parallel with the 1 meg and 22K and you end up with a very, very low input impedance at the, uh, the, the phase inverter. So Mark G was absolutely right. You would pretty much shut down the phase inverter, it would have such a weak input um, that you really, you wouldn't be able to get much signal through there. Um, so thanks again, Mark, uh, for helping me see that. That was uh, kind of a, um, I mean, again, looking back, it's obvious, but uh, I wasn't thinking in terms of ground, but uh, a positive voltage. So, uh, okay, on to the next thing. Someone else commented on, on one of the, uh, the $75 Dumble uh, build videos. I think it was probably the last one in the series that I've uh, completed so far. Um, and I had to kind of laugh at myself, uh, to myself uh, about his comment because he said, must not be very good because you haven't posted anything else on this. Well, um, yeah, and, and as I mentioned in a previous video, I took two, year, two years off. I was away from my workshop for a long time, and um, I just haven't done much with this uh, amplifier since then. Um, I do intend to uh, figure out what's wrong with it and keep moving forward with it. And that's why I've got my oscilloscope hooked up today. I'm going to see if I can track down where the noise is coming from. And in fact, if you look at this, uh, if you look at the screen here, you can see, even without zooming in, you can see there's a lot of noise. Um, there's no signal, nothing's plugged into this right now. This is all just, what you're seeing here is just noise. And so, this is, uh, right now it's coming off of the, uh, V1B plate. Um, after the capacitor, obviously, so I'm not putting, uh, high voltage DC into the probe here. Um, but that's a, that's a lot of noise to have coming off of the second valve plate. Uh, so... What I'm going to do today is um, just see if I can narrow down where this problem starts and then maybe from there figure out how to fix this thing so that we can get back on track with this, with this build and uh, start moving forward again. I'm not going to focus exclusively on this amp right now, and here's why. This thing has been a pain in the neck. It stresses me out. <laughs> I I mean, after the amount of time that I've put into this to have to, you know, chase down this stupid noise problem, I don't remember a lot of the things that I did. Um, you know, how, how wires are routed underneath the board. Um, this is an absolutely horrendous layout to work with. Uh, remember, I had to work with the, uh, the first two tube sockets on the wrong side of the circuit board because that's the way that PV laid this out. So, it's just, I, if I spend too much time on this, just working solid on this, I'm going to not want to finish it. And so it, it's, an, it's important that I don't try to do too much at once on this. So I am going to keep moving forward on this, but at this point I don't think it really matters whether I just fix it all right now because, hey, it's been two years. I mean, if you've waited this long, I don't think you're going to cry over another week um, or a month or whatever.
Anyway, we'll keep moving forward on this a little bit at a time, and um, when I get to the point where I can finish it, I will. So as I'm continuing to uh, troubleshoot this, I'm also going to be working on a new project. And this is something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. This is an amplifier that I designed... Oh, jeez, I probably started working on this design like five years ago. And so I've started... Uh, I've got most of the parts together for it. My transformers and chassis. Um, actually, I think I have everything ordered that I need for this build. And um, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about what this is going to be before I start doing the troubleshooting on this. I've always liked the sound of 6973 tubes. Those are the ones that are really common in uh, Valco, Supro, Gretsch, whatever else, you know. But 6973 tubes were uh, actually more common in, um, in things like jukeboxes. Uh, but they just sound so good in those old Supro amps. And it's kind of like an EL84, but with a lot more low-end grunt. Just a warmer sounding, in my opinion, a better sounding EL84. Uh, they're not compatible. There is a different pin, uh, pin out for those tubes. So you can't just take an EL84 out and put a, a 6973 in. Uh, 6973 is also produce a little bit more power than an EL84. So I wanted to do something that was kind of a hybrid between a Supro and a Vox. And so I, I designed this amp initially to be just that. And um, so as I was getting ready to build this, uh, I started looking around for transformers, and I had a really tough time finding the right transformers. Um, partly because... I mean, there are transformers out there that would work, but everybody's out of stock. And um, so, long story short, I ended up having to change the design a little bit. I'm not going to be using using 6973s. Instead, I'm going to be using 6L6 power tubes. And what I ended up with is this uh, deluxe reverb transformer set. Now... I'm going to explain a little bit more once once I actually start this build. I'll go into more detail about the circuit and why I'm using a deluxe reverb transformer set with 6L6s and it'll be it'll become a lot uh, clearer then. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to kind of give you a, a a little teaser about that. Uh, I think this is going to be a really really fun project. This is something I've been wanting to do for a long time and it sh should sound absolutely amazing. Um, Anyway, let's get back to troubleshooting on this. Okay, so right now we got this coming off of the, the plate of V2. So, lots of noise right there. I'm going to move this a little earlier in the, uh, in the signal chain. Come on, get off of there. I'm stuck. There we go. Uh, okay, let's see. V1 plate comes on. Uh, let's see. Let's grab this. Capacitor here, and it's still there. Um, so this is uh, one of the tone stack capacitors coming off of the uh, V1A plate, and um, obviously the noise is still there. So I think we're going to have to go all the way back to actually. You know what? Let's see if it's on the grid of V1. Yep, it's still there. I mean, the amplitude is much smaller, but it's definitely there. Yeah, there's there's nothing on the uh, the input jack, so it's got to be something in here on this boost board. I want to try and just completely bypass this uh, this FET input boost board and uh, see if that eliminates the noise. So I'm gonna go get my uh, soldering iron and set it up here. Okay, I got my soldering iron set up, and uh, what I'm going to try to do is um, I'm going to try to take this shielded cable off of the input of this first grid here, and then so that disconnects the output of the that boost board, and then. 
I'm going to take a wire here, and one end will go in there, the other end is going to kind of wrap around the, uh, um, wrap around this existing wire on the input jack just to kind of hopefully tack it in place well enough that I can get a signal through. It's not a permanent connection. Okay, let me tip this up. So I got one end on there, now I just gotta tack it into the uh, tube socket here, or tube, yeah, the pin, the input. Grid pin, you know what I mean. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, so back over to our oscilloscope. Get this out of the way. Turn that on. It'll take a little bit before we see anything on the screen here. Just gonna let the tubes warm up. But I should be seeing some noise on here like it was before. Hmm, are the tubes hot? Tubes are hot, and the noise is gone. So, uh, yeah, kind of looks like it's got to be on that uh, uh, FET boost board. Well, one way to find out for sure, let's uh, plug this into the speaker and plug in a guitar and see what we hear. Okay, so obviously, a lot less noise than before. So, we got rid of the noise problem. Um, okay. Now, how about channel two? So I think I remember this. The uh, for some reason the uh, the relay is not clicking over, so it's not switching to channel two. And I'll have to look into that too, uh, but not today. We got rid of one problem. That noise is gone. It's starting to sound like uh, I mean it's you know it's got the amount of hum that you would expect to get from it. Given that, I mean the volume has uh, turned up pretty high here, so. Um, that's not an unusual amount of hum coming from it. What we had before was just awful. Okay, so obviously I'm going to have to take another look at that FET input board and uh, see what's going on there. I don't know if I've maybe connected something wrong and created ground loop and that's what's causing the noise. Um, I'm pretty sure that uh, I tested that board separately before I put it in the amplifier and I didn't have a noise problem then. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's a ground loop problem, but at any rate, removing that from the equation got rid of the noise problem. So that's that's one, one major problem down. Got to figure out what's wrong with this relay board in here. I'll take another look at that. Uh, I don't, you know, it's, again, it's been so long since I started this. Um, everything that I'm doing now is, is a fresh look. Um, so... Uh, I'm not going to do that now, I'm, I'm just going to, like I said, I'm going to take little bites out of this and just do a little bit at a time, otherwise this thing is just going to frustrate me so much that uh, I'm not going to want to keep going. Uh, okay, so that's pretty much the end of this video. Uh, at least we're making progress on this, and, but be watching for the, the, uh, the first video in that new build. I think that is going to be a lot of fun. Um, by the way, I, I don't think I told you the uh well i'll tell you what i called it what i ended up naming that amplifier in the, in the next video because i'm gonna do a whole intro video for that and talk about the circuit and everything so anyway that's it for now thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one